people often think doctors make a lot of money, but do we actually? You know what? The answer might surprise you. Hi, I'm Dr. Shaw. I'm a rural family medicine resident. And on this channel, I make videos about my journey through residency. So we can't really talk about how much money we make as a resident without talking about medical school debt. Medical school debt has been rising every single year. <laughs> It's very painful to think about, but yeah, on average, I would say just for medical school, the average medical school debt is around in the ballpark of $215,000, okay? And this does not include pre-med education or any other exams that you got to take like the MCAT or any, any courses that you may take to prepare for that. No other educational things are included in this. Now, if you want to think about how much the average medical school graduate owes in total, it, it it's in the ballpark in the ballpark of $241,000. That is how much is owed to you right when you graduate medical school. And let's say this would include your pre-med, this would include like exams, this would include medical school. It's more or less obviously, but on average it's about that much. That is the accumulation of eight years of education after high school. So you don't get paid for eight years because you're investing all this money into becoming a physician. And when you get out of it, they're like, good job, you have a doctorate and here's a debt of approximately $241,000 that you have today. So that's how much you automatically owe, all right? The other important thing to take into consideration is, okay, we know how much you owe, we know what your expenses are, you have this massive medical school debt in addition to day-to-day -day living expenses, you know, rent, utilities, food, all that stuff. So you have all these expenses. How many hour, how much do you actually make? And then before we get into how much we actually make, it's like how much, another important factor to consider is how much do we work? Historically speaking, the term resident came from the fact that in previous years, not pre well, in the, the origin of the name comes from someone that used to live in the hospital, basically, that's why they were called a resident of the hospital because in their training, they essentially worked so many hours that they resided in the hospital and that name has just carried forward. So as you can imagine, with the name comes with the connotation of long hours and we do have long hours, However, as of 20, 2003, ACGME introduced duty hours and they've become very strict in it and all residency programs are, well, they should be adhering to these duty hours. So these regulations are very important. This is because it mandates how much you're allowed to work according to the ACGME. A violation of these duty hours can lead to serious repercussions for the program. So let's just go through a refresher of what these ACGME regulations are. So the first rule is you as a resident are allowed to work up to 80 hours a week averaged over four weeks. So some weeks you may work way more than 80 hours and other weeks you may not. But on average, the total, the average of the four weeks has to come to 80 hours. It cannot go over that. So what that means is according to the regulations, you are allowed to work 24 hours continuously. So you can work 24 hours continuously in patient related care. In addition to that, the program is allowed to do up to six hours of continu continuity of care and education. So you can technically be in the hospital for 30 hours at a time if you combine educational stuff, a continuity of care and actual patient care. The other thing is that you are mandated to have adequate rest period between shifts. So between shifts, you have to have 10 hours, at least 10 hours between shifts. That's one of the regulations. So there are more aspects of this regulation. And you know, if you wanna go see what these duty hour regulations are, you feel free to check out the ACGME website. The thing that is important to fixate on is the 80 hour rule. So you have this 80 hour rule, okay? You have an 80 hour rule per week. So let's just say on average, you work that much. You know, obviously some weeks you work way more than that, some weeks you work way less. But let's say it averages out to that much. Now, for the finale, how much 
do we actually make? So in order to find out how much each resident from each year actually makes, you got to go to the graduate medical education website of that program. All right. So I'm going to be linking here. I've attached a picture of my programs. Here I've attached a picture of my graduate medical education and you can see how much each year of residency actually gets paid. Every single resident, if you're a first year, gets paid the same amount. Second year gets paid the same amount. The hours really vary across specialties, but everyone gets paid the same based on their year of residency. So you can see that before taxes, I make $58,247. That's my pre-tax salary so that's how much i would make now there are 52 weeks in a year right so let's divide up how much my total annual salary would be per week per over the entire span of the year so if you calculate it that way it ends up being one thousand one hundred and twenty dollars and nineteen cents so that's how much pre-tax i would be making per week right now Let's say like on average work 80 hours a week, right? So now let's take that number divided by 80 and what do we get? A whopping $14. <laughs> so assuming that residents in their first year work 80 hours a week, taking care of patients and educating themselves and stuff, we make $14 an hour as a first year resident. So as you do go up in years of training, you do get marginal increases, but the important information that you need to factor in is, you know, you have this massive debt to pay off. You got your regular day-to-day -day expenses and you know, you have to factor in the cost of living in whatever town that you're in. Now the salary for residents in North Carolina really varies compared to sal the salary of residents in let's say New York City because the cost of living in each area is different, right? But you can see in general, this is where the ballpark where it is plus or minus a few thousand. So this is how much you typically tend to make while you're in training. Of course, when you graduate residency and you you know become a full-fledged board certified licensed physician, that salary, that salary definitely increases, but this is how much you make as a resident physician. So if you found this interesting, um, comment down below. I'm gonna go hop on my yacht real quick and I'll see you peasants later. Bye.